Hello and welcome to yet another nuclear craft tutorial. This one is a little bit different. This time we're going to be looking at Hellrage's fission reactor planner. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, it's pretty stable. It's got a lot of features. It's been slowly maintained over the last month or so. And I believe there's a couple of things that need to be fixed, but very minor stuff. And there's also um, new stuff planned all the time. There's like a big list of features that um, are planned. Um, I was obviously very skeptical about this sort of thing, but it turned out that it was a really cool idea. And I'm about, as I'm about to show you, it works really nicely and really speeds up designing reactors. Um, so let's get straight into it. So the first thing you're going to need is to download it. Now, um, there is actually uh, download links in various places on the internet, on Reddit and stuff. Um, first of all, a little advertisement for the Nuclearcraft eVault. Uh, you can join it. I'll put the link somewhere. I think the might, link might be in the description already, but I'll put it there if it isn't. Um, and you can head into all these different chats, all these different stuff where we talk about the mod. But if you head into useful links, you'll find Hellrage's Fission Reactor Planner. It's a GitHub repository. Uh, and then if you head down to, uh, where is it? If you head down to the release builds, head into this place, Mediafire. So there's a couple of things in here that you're going to want to download. It looks like the last build was a couple days ago. So first of all, I want to download this. And I also want to download Newtonsoft. You're going to need that, otherwise the thing won't run. And as you can see here, it says there. Uh, there's also archive builds here, but you probably don't want to mess around with that. You just want the latest one. So these two things you're going to need to download. I'm going to put this into a special folder that I've got ready on my clipboard. We head there in my NC Reactor Planner folder. Um, it will say sometimes that it's not commonly downloaded, but who cares? Just keep it. Um, it's not malicious. I promise you that much. And I download this as well. NC Reactor Planner. Okay, so I've got all the stuff I need. Roblox, I'll probably forget about that for now. Let's head into the planner. So we've got these two files. And first of all, we want to open up the planner. And your PC might say, yeah, if it's not you know, safe, whatever, run anyway. It's, it is perfectly safe, I can assure you. So the first thing you'll notice when you start up the app for the first time is a default config.json file gets created. Um, basically, the idea of this app is that you can actually change up the config. So all the fission stats, all the fuel stats, all the cooling rates and all that sort of stuff. Um, because obviously, if you're playing with different mod packs, they will be having different config options. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use this app, then make sure that you know what the config options are. You can obviously just check in mod options in game and you want to check what the packs fission configs are and you can uh, write your own configs and edit them by heading up into uh, open configuration. Now this is pretty cool. Um, you don't have to just have one config file all the time. You can load and save different config files. So for example, if I'm playing a pack where all these are doubled, this is just an example, uh, extra moderator power for some reason has been changed to three and extra heat is still the same, neutron reach for some reason has been lowered. What you can then do is you can then save and you can actually save your own JSON file for that particular mod pack. So say if this was, uh, I know this isn't actually what it is for Enigmatica, but say if I was doing Enigmatica, then I would save it like that. And there we go, you can see that an Enigmatica uh, file appears here. Um, I could also do one for, let's change this to that. And I could save, let's change up some of the cooler values this time. These are the uh, the cooling rates. Say if redstone became really overpowered for some reason, because redstone is impossible to get. I could save this, and this time I could put uh, modern sky block and I could save that file and you can see there it all gets saved saved and applied and I can also load back old stuff so if I want to go back to my default config which is like the base standard config that comes with NuclearCraft I can load that up and you can see that all of the um, configs get set to what they were before I can of course load all the other ones I just I just did like the uh, Enigmatica you can see here it got set back to all those values so this is really really useful if you're playing with different mod packs that have different config options set so this is really cool. So I'm going to just apply. Oh, I got loaded apply. So I'm going to just apply the defaults. But do keep in mind that if you're playing with a mod pack, Enigmatica, Modern Skyblock, all the mods, whatever, they will have different configs. You just need to make sure that you've got the right ones. Otherwise, you might build a reactor and it will be less efficient than you expected, or less good than you expected, or will perhaps overheat or whatever. So you do have to be careful. Okay, so let's get into actually building a reactor and then we'll get into loading and saving them. Let's actually look at the GUI. Uh, you can see, first of all, there is a tab here that has reactor dimensions and all the different blocks that are available, uh, all the different coolers and so forth. So I'm actually going to do a three by three by three. I'm literally gonna build the tutorial build that I did a while back. Uh, if you wanna set a new size, then all you have to do is reset the layout, confirm reset and boom, I've got this new three by three. I can either do it by layer, um, in which case, um, I need to just scroll like this. You can see there I go between the layers. Or I can just do this 
other all layers uh, set up, and you can see here the uh, L1, L2, L3 corresponding to the three different layers. This is personally my favorite, but you may like the scroll version. E means you can edit the layer and do certain stuff, so clear layer, copy layer, paste layer, so that means that if you have a design that just involves lots of stacks and tessellations of particular um, designs, then you can copy and paste them. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, we'll actually show that off. And also here you can modify the layer, so that's like deleting or adding new ones and so forth. So you can also change the scale up here, the scale, and I'm going to put the scale up just to make it a bit easier to see, uh, which is really cool. So let's do the actual design. So if I remember correctly, I'm going to have to try and remember this off the top of my head, or well, off the top of my head. Um, I think I have some cells here, 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 and here, here, here. As you can see, it, you can just click in. You can also drag, which is pretty cool. You can drag them around. Uh, and if I want to clear, then I just get some air and I drag it back. So it all works like that. It works pretty well. Um, I then think I had something like cryothium. Uh, here, 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 and then I think I had some redstone and liquid helium. And then in these corners I had some graphite, and then I had some glowstone, copper, and then here I had some, I believe it was cryothium, 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 and then a graphite and a magnesium, was it perhaps? Here it is. Boom. So down the side here, you will see all the stats and all the such of the reactor build that I just made. So you can see that we've got the different coolers, the amount of cooling, the coolers I'm using. Um, you can also see here that I've got the number of moderators, number of fuel cells, and then all the actual stats that matter. So it tells me that this reactor is safe. And the reason that is, remember before, if you actually watched that video, that it was pretty cutting edge on the heat difference uh, level. The reason that is is because, uh, also the uh, the energy here as well. The reason that is is because right now I've got it to TBU, the fuel TBU. And what I really want to set it to is, I think probably LU-235, was it, that it was close to? Yeah, there we go, LU-235, you can see here that heat difference is, uh, is zero, so it's a safe reactor. Um, so that's my LEU-235 design from before. Of course, you can just uh, copy other designs and test them out in here and change up the config, see if they're still safe. That's one reason you might want to use this. Um, but yeah, this is really for um, quickly designing and checking if new direct reactors are safe and if they're good or not. Of course, I've also got the efficiency and heat multiplier down here. Um, it also tells you the number of casings, which is quite useful. Now, right there I built a design where all of the coolers are in the right place. Now, if you place a cooler in a, on the design in this GUI where it should not go, it's not valid, uh, let's say I've got a gold cooler and I try to place it here, you will see that this gold cooler gets a sort of red outline because it's not in a valid position. Because gold coolers, if you hover over this here, says it needs to be um, at least one active water cooler and one active redstone cooler. And you can see it actually tells you even what you're missing. So it tells me here that I'm missing a water and I'm missing a redstone. But if I was to put a water here, you will see, if I hover over again, it tells me I've got no redstone because the water is touching the gold because this is in the same line. So that's actually very useful. If you are building a design and you build it in game and you think, hang on a minute, it's not being cooling quite as much as I expected, build it in here, you might see that you've got an error with one of your cooling positions. And sometimes it's quite difficult to see if you've got any errors because there's quite a lot of complicated, you know, configurations that you can do in this mod. So that's very useful. It tells you when your coolers are in the wrong place. So now that I have a design, I can now share it with people. And the reason I can do that is because I can actually save and load reactor configurations. And um, that's obviously really powerful suddenly. So I can save a reactor here. Um, again, it's a JSON file. Um, you probably want to make different folders for designs and configs, but I'm going to just save it here. It actually gives you a default name, uh, which is nice, but I'm going to call this the tutorial build version one. Actually, I think it was version two, wasn't it? Save. And you can see there it makes a new JSON file. So I could then do something crazy. I could make some new reactor. I could start making some new reactor, reset layout, boom. Um, and then, oh, hang on, this is this scale's too big for that. Hang on, let's just scale this down. And I could start making some weird new reactor. And then what could happen is I want to get the old reactor back and I just click on load reactor and I go into tutorial build version two, and boom, I've got my old reactor back, which is fantastic. So it means that I can uh, send people designs and they can um, load them up and see for themselves what's going on. They can then copy this in the world and enjoy uh, the amount of power they get from your amazing builds. Uh, of course, this works quite well with the uh, fuel calculator. So if, you, if we head into useful links, I think it's near the top. Uh, one thing that this uh, 
goes really well with is the fuel calculator. Oh, actually, I just realized you can't actually see this if I drag it over there. Um, so I know from this app that this build um, has a heat, uh, a cooling of 1900 heat units per tick. So that's minus 1900. I've got all the default configs, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I've got a heat multiplier of 475 and efficiency of 275. So 275 and 475. And the number of cells is 8. And if I let that run, then it will tell me which builds are safe and not. So this is the LU235 that we tested out. Uh, you can see here that it predicts the same power output. Uh, oh, that's because I've got it in 2BU version. Hang on, let me go to LU235. Boom. So you can see here that I've got um, 2640, which is exactly what it says here, and the projected heat's the same of zero. But it actually tells me here that LEP239 oxide would be a better choice because it has the same heat gen as the LU235, but it's got more power. Um, so if I set this to uh, LEP239 in here, oxide, you can see, there we go, it's safe, and I get that 3234 that it says down here. So this combos really well um, with the calculator. And the final thing to mention is that you can actually save images of the reactor layers. You can actually uh, save a picture of both the stats and the design or an individual layer by layer uh, photo. So if I'm in all layers mode and I save PNG, if uh, you can see here that I've got an option, uh, save the entire reactor or press no and just save a layer. Now if you're in all layers mode, it will just save the top layer. But if you're in, uh, in layer by layer mode, uh, it will save the current layer. I'll show that in a second. But for now, um, I will save the entire reactor. And um, if I do that, I'll get a PNG. Uh, if I check in here, here it is. And it will, as you can see, it shows you all the stats. It tells you what fuel I'm using, all the, uh, all the information that was on that app. And it also shows me a little picture of the design down here, which is really cool. Uh, if I was to save a, if I go into layer, let's say if I go into layer two, just to show that it works in general, and I save a PNG, um, then I press no to just save the current displayed layer. I can save a photo. And if I go into that folder again, I have a photo of that second layer. So I can do it layer by layer, um, which means that I can then... That's another way of sharing designs, I guess, is uh, just showing the photos. But you don't get all the information. You don't get the ability to modify it, obviously. Uh, so that, I think, now is pretty much everything with this app. As you can see, it works really well. Um, there are a few things. Um, if you uh, add and remove layers... Actually, I didn't really show that off. Really, did I? Um, let's just uh, show the deleting layer. So I can delete a layer like that. Um, I can insert a new layer uh, after the one I click, or I can insert a new layer before the one I click. So there we go. Um, and I can also edit. I can also copy this layer, perhaps. So if I want to copy this layer, I want to paste it over there. That works. Uh, and I can actually paste again, I think. So all that stuff works really well because we clear the layer as well instead of just deleting it. So yeah, you can manipulate the layers. You can have lots of different ways of showing it. You have different scales, of course. Uh, you have all the coolers available. It tells you when the coolers are wrong. You can save and load confis. You can save and load reactors. And you can sa uh, save pictures as well, which is fantastic. So fantastic job, Hellrage. It's a really cool app. And I highly recommend it to everybody. Uh, as I said, you can download it through the, uh, the Discord. Uh, I'll also put a link in the description. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. So I'll see you in the next video. See you then.